All right, so we're here on call number eight is for our WordPress maintenance plans. And uh, we're gonna go step by step on getting started with offering your clients these plans. But first, before we start, uh, you need to ask yourself a question. Uh, why should you be offering WordPress maintenance plans? And you gotta really think about it. Why would you want to offer these plans? The thing you got to first realize and know before you start these plans is you got to understand and believe the value of the maintenance plans. You got to really see how this is going to be helping your, your clients, how this is positioning you in a way to be, uh, to be able to offer more value to your clients. So you got to have to believe in it. It has to like come down to the heart because if you're going to talk to your clients about these plans, uh, you got to like really sell them on it. So the first thing to do uh, while trying to figure out uh, the value of these plans, let's take a look at what are the common problems that clients have. You know, one of the biggest problems we found was when a website was completed, uh, clients are just often left alone with the website. And then they try doing everything themselves. That's when they start making mistakes. That's when they start breaking things. And that's when they start getting frustrated. And then after time, the website, it starts to, you know, it starts to have hiccups. It starts to slow down. It gets really messed up. Bugs start to come up. They don't know what to do with the bugs. They're getting frustrated with it. And they kind of like, they're just, they just, they're dealing with it, but their frustration is just building up on it. And then they got to go find a new developer. And whenever you're finding a new developer, really this goes with any kind of a service provider. Whenever you're trying to go find a new person, it's, it's, uh, it, it could be a headache. You got to talk to quite a few of them. You got to figure out who you can trust. And then uh, there's a big risk of having poor work done. And then, of course, at, you know, if you don't take care of the security, uh, things aren't updated, a uh, good chance that the website will get hacked. So these are the problems that I was facing and uh, one of the reasons why we also started these plans because I got tired of our clients leaving us. We had spent all this time and care into building a website for them. We put a lot of love into it and we'd be uh, very detailed with it. And then they would come back six months later, a year later, they would be frustrated. They would sometimes blame. They would think that it wasn't done well and everything would be messed up. Sometimes they had a few developers working on it. You go in the back end and now it's a mess. And same thing with, with new businesses, with new clients. Uh, we actually got a lot of business this way. Uh, one of the uh, common problems we found with new clients coming to us was that they came and their websites were just a mess. In the back end, it was a mess. You would see, you would see like the bad habits of three or four web developers in the back end. And there was no other option but to do complete rebuilds. So these are the problems I looked at for our clients. And it's important to empathize with them. And you got to put yourself in their shoes and look at it from their perspective. Now, if you build websites for your clients, and even though if you build it really clean, very well, and you just give it to them and let them be on their way, and a year goes by and it starts messing up, it's out of date, uh, bugs start coming up from the client's point of view they're going to they're going to go from being happy with the website and then that could quickly change and i'm sure if you i'm sure uh, uh we've all been in a situation where at first we were happy with something and then after we had it for some time we started noticing all the flaws in it uh take themes for example uh, if you go like on theme forest and you look at themes and you buy a theme based on the reviews, most of those reviews on the themes uh, usually are after like the first week or two or month of actually using the theme. But anyone that's used a the theme for maybe six months starts to really see how well the theme is really built. So you got to put yourself in their shoes and look at it from their perspective. Now we got to get into the solution. How can we solve these problems? For the clients first one i mean this is it right here and the main the main solution to it is offering a wordpress maintenance and care plan thing is you got to realize and you got to believe that this is actually needed it doesn't matter how 
busy the client is online. It doesn't matter if they're getting uh, 10,000 views a day or, or 500 uh, uh, visitors a week. They need maintenance on it or else the website is going to break down. It's kind of like a car, and this is the analogy that I use with our clients, that a website in a way is like a car. Uh, the car, you have to keep it, uh, you gotta give it oil changes, you gotta rotate the tires after a certain amount of time, but if you keep driving that car without maintaining it, it's gonna start, uh, it's gonna start degrading, it's gonna start performing better, and it's gonna eventually break down in certain areas that'll cost more money. So those first, that was the first part. You have to believe in these plans and see how this is going to help your clients. But now we got to see how it's going to help you in your business. You're going to be adding a whole lot more value into what you give your clients. You're going to be positioning yourself in a way, not as a designer or as a developer, that just comes in and builds a website, flips a website and then leaves and is on to the next client and the next client. When you're building these plans and presenting them to your clients, you're positioning yourself in a way that, hey, we're gonna build this site, but we have something else in line because we wanna help you take care of your site. We wanna help you manage and maintain your site so that way it runs well, it stays performing, and driving your business and you could also focus on your business without having to worry about it so you're positioning yourself as more than just the regular web designer or developer or agency you're positioning yourself as someone that cares and is going to be there for your clients this is huge extra value that is being added and then you're going to be building long-term client relationships and these relationships they are going to lead to more work and more referrals you're not gonna have any more of a client that has a site that leaves for six months or a year that starts dealing with bugs, getting frustrated and questioning uh, the integrity of the site and how well it was really built because that question is gonna be out the way because you're gonna be there making sure it's okay. But it's you're gonna get a whole lot more work. I mean, some clients might not be so busy with the website, but the majority of them are gonna need constant updates. And this is going to bring you a steady stream. And then you're going to have the extra income with uh, building your MRR. And that's going to be your monthly recurring income. And having that, that, uh, uh, having that income coming in, that's a set number that you know you're going to get this every single month. So you're, now you're given a number that you're going to give every single month. You know I'm going to get this amount of money every single month, whether I get a new job or I don't. You are also gonna probably end up getting more ongoing work and changes as well on top of that. So already now you're gonna be making more money inside your business. So those are the three big benefits out of this. And now we need to start. So where to start? So you wanna take time and choose the services you wanna offer. You won't, don't want to just rush into it. What you want to do is start by writing down everything you could think of offering. Uh, research, look at what other designers and developers are offering. Once you have a full list, pick and choose what you're comfortable doing and what you think would be the best benefit to your clients. So this is the process that I did when I started off. I wrote literally a list about this long. Just I, everything I could find. Uh, spent time going online and, and I, uh, I found other websites, other agencies and other freelancers that offer the service, specifically WordPress maintenance plans. And you could Google it, you could really take time and find a lot of websites with it. And I created, you know, I saved the links for all the websites and I went through all of them. They're all different. All of them offer different uh, services. They all have a little bit of a different structure to it. So I wrote down everything out of it, and that was my starting point right there. I wanted to see what was possible. So after you got a list, now you have all these things that you're looking at that you could offer in it, but we first got to start with the essentials. Every single plan has to have four essential elements to it. 
in order to keep a website healthy and to keep it so you are actually taking care of the website and are being responsible and, and uh, accountable for the website. Uh, all those other things, all that, those things on the list, those are all gonna be extra bonuses on top of it. And those are gonna be updates uh, to plugins, themes, uh, core WordPress. It is gonna be uh, the security monitoring. It's gonna be automatic backups, and it's gonna be uptime monitoring. And let's go ahead and take a quick dive into these. So first one on the updates, don't be scared. Don't be scared to update, make sure they're updated. Uh, always back up before you update, you're gonna be safe with it. But you wanna make sure no matter what, you're doing regular updates, either weekly or even, uh, or either monthly or weekly on the updates. Now security, this is a big one right here because uh, I think it's something that could be easily overlooked. And you don't wanna do that because you don't wanna take the chance. And it's happened to me where uh, we are maintaining a site, we're responsible for it, uh, and it's gotten hacked, even with all the security we'll put in place. And it does happen, but you wanna make sure you limit that as much as possible and protect yourself, and then be ready in case something does happen. So first off, we gotta make shit, I'm sure it's just about bulletproof. Um, don't take any chances. Uh, realize that all websites are constantly being targeted. Bots are constantly uh, crawling, looking for them. So we gotta set it up. Uh, just remember uh, uh, to keep in mind that you're responsible for the site's overall security. Take that time to properly set it up. So if you get a new client that's on your maintenance plan, you're gonna have to set up their security. You're gonna wanna make sure that you're using a good security plugin. Uh, we're using for our security uh, iThemes Pro and then use a firewall on top of that. And that's where we use WordFence for our firewall. There's a few other different options as well out there. This is just what we're using. Uh, run regular scans. We have scans running on all of our sites daily. If something happens and goes down, I'm getting emails about it so I can react to it right away. Change your WP admin login. This is a... Uh, one, this is a very common way to get your website hacked. Choose a different login. What we do is we choose another login, the extension to log into the back end, and we have our own custom one that we use for all of our sites. Um, make sure you got an SSL and uh, set up that two-factor authentication. It's a pain to use, but it is a lifesaver. It really helps. It might be one of the best uh, uh, new ways of protecting the site. And then also add an audit plugin. See, uh, we had all these in line. Well, we had all these in line and we still got a, a client site hacked uh, recently. This happened just about a month and a half ago. And I believe the hack was actually targeted by one of their competitors. And, uh, but because we had everything in line, because we had uh, uh, the regular scans going on, we had constant email notifications. So when it did happen, I had an email come in right away, was able to jump on it and get it fixed before sensitive data was uh, taken, before anything got really bad. So I was able to jump in on it. With the audit plugin that we have on it, I was actually able to track down where it came from, what started it, and what was done on the website. Because when something like this happens, and I didn't add this in the slide, but when you're doing your contract, you have to make sure to tell your clients we're going like in your contract that this is what we're going to do to protect your site, but nothing is 100%. And even like you could use PayPal as an example, because PayPal was just recently hacked. So anything really is hackable, but we will do our best. And if something happens, uh, we're going to go ahead and fix it. And that's where the value came in. So when our client's website got hacked, we're able to jump on it right away. Early morning, jumped on it, spent about four hours on it, and was able to find the hack, fix it, revert backups, make sure everything was clean, go through the audit, was able to actually give an accurate report so our clients had a report that they could take to their shareholders with the whole account of what happened. Now, that was a pain for me to have to do, but that was what I was getting paid for. All those months, I mean, the client paid us for about a year of, 
of maintenance and they paid a lot of money. And this is where the value came in that they had somebody to call that was that can jump on it and that could get it fixed right away. All right, so let's go to backups. Uh, there's a few ways of doing backups. Uh, you can use a backup plugin that automatically generates it. Uh, you can use hosting that has automatic backups. And you can use a WordPress management platform. Uh, and we're going to talk about that uh, later on inside the call about the management platforms. And those also provide automated backups. And then there's another kind which I do recommend as well. There's a backups that you're getting locally on your computer. Then there's also the cloud and offsite backups. I recommend having both of them uh, just to be extra safe. Uptime monitoring. Uh, this right here is crucial to have. What, okay, so uptime monitoring is gonna alert you if your website goes offline. And this happens usually due to hosting and server issues. Uh, you may be on a shared server, your site might be going down often and you might not even know about it. By monitoring uptime, you can make sure your server is running optimal. Now, you never want to be in a position where your client calls you up and says, hey, how come my website is down? Because that will not look good for you because it's your job to make sure that it's running smoothly. So what the uptime monitoring does, it lets you know the second it goes down. Well, it, it, we have our set up right now. If the site goes down for two minutes, I get an email notification and it tells me it's down. Then I know I need to take a look at it, find out what's going on. In fact, also, this is how we found out a website got hacked before as well, by, make, by the alert for the uptime. And you also never know about your hosting, especially if you're using hosting like, uh, like SiteGround or GoDaddy or any of these shared uh, hostings. Because sometimes what, what happens with these shared hostings is they cram so many websites into one server and you might have like one website that is spiking heavy, that has got like massive traffic and that is taking all the resources away from the other websites and that could cause your website to go down or to perform very poorly. So by having this in place, you can make sure that, you know, if you keep getting alerts, like it's down for five minutes and then it's back up, down for five minutes, then it's back up. Now you know there might be an issue with the server and you gotta get a hold of your hosting company and figure this out. And there's some tools as well to use for this. You got Manage WP, uh, Jetpack, and then the other manage, uh, WordPress management tools. Uh, we use man, uh, Manage WP for ours. And all right, kind of going off of, uh, I think I might've put this in the wrong order right here, but it, I think this also ties into the uptime because, uh, okay, yeah, this is on the wrong order right here. Do you know, we're gonna go back to this one right here for the hosting. This is for the extra services right here. Wait, do we hit them all? Backups, security updates. Okay, yeah, that was it for the big four right there. Okay, so we got our big four. Update, security, monitoring, backups, and uh, uptime monitoring. So before I keep going, does anybody have any questions? Want to jump in right now with anything? All right, I just got to unshare it. I want to make sure we're still online and everything's still going fine. I've had a few technical difficulties in the past and made mistakes with recording. All right, cool. Good to see everyone still there. All right, so let's go to the extras. So those four right there, they have to go into all plans. You need those right there, they're essential. Now there's one that uh, 
that uh, uh, I get a lot of questions on, and that's if you should be offering hosting with your maintenance plan. And uh, I think if you are, if either if you're gonna, so it is ideal to either provide the hosting or to set up their hosting with the reseller program, uh, such as Flywheel. This way you can ensure their site is on a proper hosting and being managed. We never leave a client's we never leave a client's website on a host they cho chose that we cannot vouch for, and the reason why we never just leave a client's website on their host is in the past we just had problems with their hosting that has caused uh, uh, that just caused a lot of headaches. It's caused their sites to go down. It's caused their sites to not perform well, and we know that our hosting works very good, and we have everything set up. So it's optimal. So part of us, what we do over here is uh, hosting is required if someone wants to be on our care plan. Now, if you don't want to deal with the hosting, uh, I strongly advise getting a reseller program. Uh, for one, you're going to make sure that they're on a good hosting. Flywheel is one that's really good for WordPress and it does well with Elementor as, you know, as well. But then you're also making sure that you're making that extra money on it. So either one I think is okay, but if you can do hosting yourself, I, I think that's optimal because I think that's uh, best because you got full access and control and can ensure that the website will perform well. A few other options. Uh, after you've researched other websites offering uh, WordPress maintenance plans, you'll see the possibilities that you could do. Here's just a few of them right here. Like you could do performance monitoring, uh, broken link monitoring, Google Analytics reports, client reports, SEO keyword rankings, comment management. You could do spam management. There's a lot of things that you could add into the plans that you could do extra. And these are how you build your pricing tiers. So it's good to have options and three, like the rule of three just works. It works well. You have three different pricing tiers. You start off at the base with the basics and then you build it up to the ones that need more extra work on it and that have the bigger budgets for it. And then you have the extras that you could use to add more value to get the bigger uh, plans. So how do you select your prices? How do you, and how do you decide how much to charge? And this isn't easy. I wish there was a, a simple answer to this, uh, but it's not that easy. You have to consider your cost. You have to consider your time. How much are you going to be investing in plugins? And what is your current market? Uh, you have to research other prices and how these will fit into your target audience and then add extras for the unforeseen. Uh, the thing is though, the more value you offer, the more you can charge. So if you are going to add a long list of things to uh, your plans, then definitely you want to charge more. You got to consider your target audience. Who are your customers? Are they small local independent uh, store owners that, you know, only use their website minimally? Or are you working with e-commerce clients that have high traffic on the website? So these are going to determine the prices. And then you also got to look at what are the competitors prices as well. You definitely want to charge more. But what I advise is what I would suggest is start off with a number for your three tier plans. When you get that number together, add another 20, 30, 40 dollars on top of it. So add extra to whatever number you charge, add more on top of it. And then go ahead and start there. And then after your first couple of clients, see how it's going. See if you need to raise that price up. Uh, we're already getting ready to raise our prices on ours. And it took me a while to come up with the cost on ours. I really had to like look at it. I had to look at our clients. I had to look at what kind of clients we have. And I had to look at the value of it, how much does it really cost? And just to give you an idea of the cost that we do, uh, we start off at $100 and we go up to uh, $350 a month for our maintenance plans. And I feel we are cha uh, charging way too low. I think I should double our numbers to be honest with you, uh, but we'll, we'll take it a step at a time. Uh, one of the things too is, uh, how much are you gonna invest in your plugins? And uh, I didn't make a slide on this for the plugins, but 
if you're going to run maintenance plans, it is a good idea to start looking at investing into the plugins you're going to need. For example, uh, we get WP Rocket and we pay a year for it, and that's for all of our clients' websites that are on our plans. We have iThemes Pro, and that's also for all of our clients' websites. We have uh, Elementor Pro. We have all these agency uh, licenses and their unlimited websites, and they're for a year, and we spend thousands of dollars a year on these uh, plugins. So when I started the pricing, a lot of the normal prices for, for what I saw, like the average price range, what I saw for uh, WordPress care plans was anywhere from like $30 to like $60 a month for like starting. And I couldn't go that low because we invest so much money into our plugins. And that's actually one of our selling points with our clients. Uh, one of our selling points, you don't have to do this. You could try to get your clients to buy their own plugins. That's totally fine. Uh, but I just like to take the headache out of it and just charge more money. So what we looked at was, okay, we need to make at least uh, $50 profit. You know, okay, we'll say on our basic plan. We need to make at least $50 profit on our basic plan. That, that's profit. Now for our uh, managed WP, we're going to pay uh, $10 a month for that website. For the plugins, that's costing maybe around $20 to $30 a month for it. And then for my time on it, and I had to like put all those numbers together. So it went from 30 or went from 50 up to hundred and we're getting ready to raise it again. Cause I still feel it's too low. So that's how we came up with choosing the price. Anyone have any questions right now on this, on the pricing or anything so far? Is any is everyone hearing this okay? Could somebody just like give me a yeah, all good, so I know like it's uh playing through okay? Yeah, yeah, all good, good, really clear. Okay, cool. Thank you for that. So the goal with uh, building these plants and setting it up is to have minimal effort with maximum results and to automate everything. You want this thing to be automated fully in the background. You do not want to spend that much time. And just to give you an idea of how much time we spend on our maintenance plans, we spend minutes a week, literally. We don't spend hours, we spend minutes a week. It's running in the background. The time comes setting this up, setting your plans up, and then setting everything up to be fully automated. And first, before we go too much into it, this is a common mistake right here that will hurt your automation big time. So avoid this mistake. Do not include hours of work in your plans. This will eat up your time and the goal is to automate and spend minimal time maintaining and managing your client sites. As an alternative, set up an hourly rate for small fixes just for clients on your plans and make this an exclusive offer. So what I mean by this is you'll see on some people's plans that they'll say, we'll do backups, we'll do security, we'll do all that stuff. And we'll also include two free hours of, of updates and content and blog posts every single month. And this will get you in a jam right here because a client then is going to expect two hours of your time and it's going to take away from the automation right here. And you're not really going to get paid well. I mean, maybe if you're charging the client for those two hours included, but from my experience and from other people's that I've talked to that have had plans going, whenever they offer these hours into it is when they start to run into this is taking too much time away. And the reason why too you want to automate everything is you don't want this taking your time. You want to be able to focus on your business and on your business growth. You want to focus on your current projects. You want to focus on your marketing, your branding. You don't want all your time going into hours because if you got like 10 clients or 20 clients now on your maintenance plan and all of them are expecting two or three hours uh, every single month, it, it's going to just eat up your time right there and it's going to become a headache. It's going to stress you out and then you're going to wish you've never done this. So what we do is, and this has worked right here, um, first, having these plans does bring in the recurring business. 
and you wanted to bring in the recurring business, uh, what we do is we have in our plans, for anyone on our plan, they get an hourly rate, a special rate, and they get a discount on an hourly rate. And it's only for like tasks that are under 10 hours. If someone has a big job that's like gonna be 20, 30, 40 hours estimate, then that's gonna be a separate project. But if it's under 10, uh, 10 hours, say they need uh, sliders changed, you need the images replaced, they need to add a new section on their home page. We already have it set up where we'll do that for them with a three to five business day turnaround time. And only our clients on our maintenance plans can do work under 15 hours. And what I mean by that is, if somebody does not get our maintenance plan, one of our clients, they have us build a side, we design and we build it, we offer our maintenance plan and they choose not to, they cannot come back and ask for small, tiny changes because that just gets in the, that, that just gets in the way with, uh, with the day-to-day -day work that disrupts the process and other projects. But for clients on our maintenance plan, we have something set up just for them. And the reason why we do it just for those clients too is we know their sites. Uh, we know these are the sites we're managing. So when we have other developers and other team members go in, they already know the sites. It's not like just you know random a site that we did a year ago that comes in for two hours. We're working on sites that we work on every single month and that we know inside and out. And it's all about building a process and to automate everything. Now, what you wanna look for is you're gonna to have to have a website management system. And what that website management system is, basically it's like a dashboard system where you could connect all of your websites, all of your WordPress sites. And from that one dashboard, you could do everything on it. You could set up, uh, you could do your updates from that dashboard on all the websites. Uh, you, <clears throat> excuse me, you run your security. Basically, everything we talked about can be done from that dashboard and it could all be automated. We use Manage WP. And with Manage WP, we connect our website there and then we set up our backups. We set up our, our uh, security monitoring. We set up our uptime monitoring. We set everything up so it's automated. It's automatically working. The only thing that we do every single week is we do manual uh, backups just because we want to check it out. But when we do the backups, all we do is click one button and it backs up everything. I mean, I mean updates. We just click one button. We don't have to like go in and like take time. Like it does not take that much time. We just go in and back and uh, update everything. And then we also make our reports for our clients. So one thing we also want to do and which is really good is to have a report for your clients every single month. But you also want those reports you have to have automated as well, because that could take a lot of time if you make them manually. And with these systems right here, they all have them built in. They're all built for this and you can automate it 100%. And additional <coughs> automation. So first, the automation, which is like uh, the technical part, which is like the updates, uh, backups, uh, security, monitoring, performance monitoring, even Google Analytics reports, even SEO keyword ranking, uh, what else, uh, uh, broken link monitoring, uptime monitoring, all of those could be done in one of these platforms. But there's one other thing that I would suggest, and this is a good opportunity. And that is, this is a chance for you to grow your business. And this is an opportunity where you could actually hire somebody and start building your team. So looking to scale your business, it's a great opportunity to consider hiring a freelancer or a contractor specifically for your maintenance on clients with ongoing work. This is a chance to build your team and grow your business. So what I mean by this is, Let's say you got 10 websites on your plan right now. Like you, you, or let's even go smaller. Let's say you just started it and you got just three websites on your plan. Uh, so you got all three of those websites. They're connected to uh, your management system. 
you're able to spend, you know, 10, 15 minutes a week taking care of that and making sure it's all good. But then you also got those same clients now that they are going to be coming back to you wanting more work. That's for sure. So you got to expect, uh, uh, expect that and prepare for it. By hiring a freelancer or a contractor, um, you can start building your team slowly and not too fast. It, it takes it takes time to develop that skill, to develop that skill and experience with working with another freelancer or contractor. Like it isn't something that's just really simple. You just hire someone, tell them A, B, and C, go ahead and do this and it gets done. It, it takes time to learn how to, because it's more project management at this point. And just like it took time to learn how to build a website, it takes time and practice to learn how to hire someone and to have, you know, to manage them on a project. And it's a lot easier to get a, a, to hire someone to start off small. And what I mean by that is if you hire someone for a big project, it could turn into a headache because you don't know how that person works. You don't even have a system or process built with them. Your relationship hasn't been built with them yet. And you have to build that relationship and process. When you start off small like this, it gives you a chance to really build that relationship. And what you want, you want just one person. You want somebody that you could build an ongoing relationship with. And maybe after a few months, you guys get to know each other better. Uh, there's expectations for both sides. Uh, it takes time for them to get to know you and what you want and what you're really looking for as well. And you have to give people the opportunity. Uh, one of the common mistakes I know that I made when I was uh, new in hiring people was I have really high expectations, really high. I'm super detail oriented. Uh, I, I look at every single little pixel. I look at, you know, every single line height, letter space, and like, I'm really picky. So to hire somebody that, that we don't know each other yet and to expect them to live up to those expectations was actually uh, a mistake that I made in the beginning. Uh, you have to be able to learn how to build that relationship and both sides have to be teachable. The developer that you hire, they gotta be teachable because they have to understand uh, what you're looking for. But myself, as a person hiring uh, a contractor, a freelancer, I also have to be teachable. I also have to be willing to learn them and learn like their strengths. Uh, I gotta learn their weaknesses, areas that you know we could look at to fix, and, and, and or not fix, but to improve. So by starting off small and hiring someone for small jobs just for your maintenance, you're building that up. And this is a great way to start scaling up your business. Uh, we have someone that just helps us out and that has worked with us for a while now on our maintenance plans. And we have built such a good system together and the way we work together just works so well now. And it took a few months to get there. But now that we got there, like all that time that I invested into working with the other freelancer to the other developer, it all came back and it's all paying off because now uh, I'm able to get requests from clients. I'm able to spend 10, 15 minutes setting everything up and my guy is good to go. He's ready to go and we're in sync with each other and we work really well and we started off small but we keep building up and now we're working on bigger projects, more work every single month. It gets bigger and bigger. And I look forward to now. I also feel comfortable and confident on sending him very large projects and also look at him now hiring as being part of our company as well. So just to wrap all that up, this is a good opportunity to start to scale your business, to look at hiring, to develop those skills, on project management and building a team. All right, so this is the end of it. It's just a wrap up right here, just to like, uh, just go through like what you will get out of offering this maintenance plans. Uh, you're gonna be getting an opportunity to scale your business uh, by building your MRR once you have a big enough monthly stream. 
revenue stream. Now you can pick and choose your projects and spend more time in your business growth. Also, there's no more free work when clients request small fixes uh, and you will have a system in place. Also, most importantly, you're giving your clients something they will need and they do need to have something in place like this. All right, so let's go ahead and break to q and I'm going to go ahead and uh, stop sharing my screen right now and we're gonna open it up for open uh, participation uh, or any questions. Let me see how to stop sharing. Right, my throat's a little dry right here. I'm not used to talking for so long. Hey, Jeff. <laughs> Hi, Jeff. Clement, what's up, man? How you doing? Yeah, I'm good. Uh, I I already typed the question on the chat. Can you read it? Yeah. The proposal and then decided to use manage with WPP. WP. Oh, okay. And also the maintenance proposal template. Let me see here. Let me pull up something. I'll try to find one of our older proposals. So when we give a project proposal, uh, we put the maintenance plan in the proposal. And let me show you how I position it right here. Uh, All right, just give me one second. All right, cool. Here's one that we did. I'm going to share the screen. All right, can you see my screen again? You guys see my screen okay? All right. So when we do, a, this is a proposal we did uh, last year. And... These are how our proposals look. So when we do it, you know, we just have an opening. Then we have a little bit of our capabilities in there, overview of the project. Then we do our project scope inside our proposal. And you can see I really detail it out when we do it. Um, we give our timeline inside the proposal, let them know exactly what they're looking at, uh, how the whole project will look to them. Then we give them the cost of uh, the project and then we add in the maintenance as well inside there. So the maintenance is that option for them from the very beginning. And then here we have our maintenance plan inside the proposal. So we first, you know, we, we break down the project and then we really go into the maintenance plan. You can see like I put the entire plan into there. I don't just make it small. I really want to sell this plan. Does that help, uh, Clement? Uh, Clement, you're on uh, mute. Oh, there's a chat. Okay, cool. So wonderful. All right. <laughs> hey, I do plan on making a template of our proposals. Like right now, we're making a resource page for the group, for uh, the BBE group. And it's going to be a resource uh, page where you can download all this stuff. So I will have in the short future, like uh, templates of like proposals and capability decks and, you know, things that I have that I could just, I just want to share with you guys. So I, I will have this sometime soon. Oh, hey, a, yo boy. What's up, man? How you doing? Yeah. Uh, from your talk, uh, you, you talk about you offer your plugins great, but how you deal with the themes? Oh, so I don't buy themes. I use like only Astra or Hello. Like I don't use uh, paid themes anymore. And and sometimes every now and then there are clients that need like a plugin or maybe even a theme that's outside of 
that needs more of a specialty, especially WooCommerce. You know, when you're dealing with like WooCommerce sites, you're going to need those extra really expensive plugins. Like those we do charge for, you have to pay for that. So if the client needs a specialty theme that's like 60 bucks, then they're going to have to pay for that. Another question. Uh, do you offer the service like uh, doing an audit before proposal? Wait, what was that? Can you say it again? It's like a audit before doing the proposal. Audit the client website. We don't really audit the website. Uh, what we usually do before the proposal is a discovery call. And like the way like it goes is like, okay, so, so this week we got a lead that came to our website. So the first step when we get the lead is we set up a 30 minute call and that 30 minute call is just to like get a feel for each other, get to try to understand the project better. And if it looks like it's going well, the next step is we're going to schedule like a one to three hour discovery call. Uh, and that is where we're going to dig deep and that you know, that's where we really find out the goals of them. So I don't do more of an audit on their website. I do an audit on them. You know, I'm, I'm auditing their goals, their purpose, their reasoning behind it. And I'm just asking tons of questions and I'm trying to get to the root of their problem. That way I could go ahead and give them a solution. Now, one of the things too I learned to do is uh, I don't, a client might come and say, this is my problem in the very beginning, but it might not be necessarily that's their main problem. And if we sit there and we talk and we ask enough questions, it's like, you got to think of it like a therapist. You know, when a therapist is sitting, you know, with, with the patient, they're asking a lot of questions and they're trying to get the patient to come to the realization of what the real problem is. And that's, you know, that, that's uh, what we do when we're doing our discovery calls. <laughs> Is that your boy, Clement? <laughs> yeah, boy and girl. <laughs> awesome. hey Jeff, why you decided to use uh, Manage WP then other like men WP oh man good question good one and I was actually considering about going through manage WP but I feel like that might be a whole nother call right there where we could go through setting that up uh, so I go with manage WP because it has everything that I need in it but you only pay for what you use so let's say like okay we get this one client right here we just pay a dollar for each thing that we use if the client is only getting daily backups, if they're doing security, if they're doing uh, uptime monitoring, and if they're doing the, uh, the uh, uh, what was the other one, the backups, like I'm paying only $5 a month for that website. So with the other ones, the reason why I didn't go with them was uh, it was more for the cost. You know, I, I save more money with Managed WP and it does what I need. Also, the client reports I like in there. Like, it's really easy to generate client reports. And it looks super professional. When you give your client a report at the end of the month, every single month, along with, like, their invoice receipt, you know, uh, it looks good. Oh, there's one thing, too, I just remembered right now. I'm actually going through this with a client. Like, I got a client, like, they're trying to sign up on our maintenance plan. Uh, one thing that we do with our maintenance is... Uh, I try to get them on our, because I'm in Thailand and we can only use PayPal, but I try to get them on recurring payments too. I forgot to mention that on, on the call. Part of the automation as well is collecting payments from clients. I do not want to chase down 20 clients every single month. I hate chasing people down for money. Uh, even if PayPal takes a chunk of money out, it, to me, it's worth it having everything automated and just automatically coming through through recurring payments. And the way I do that is in my PayPal account, I just go to create a button. I make a recurring payment through there 
And then you got an option to turn that into a link. And I just send that link to a client and then they could go ahead and pay. But I got one client right now, they're trying to get on a maintenance plan because they want us to do a bunch of little work, but they're, they're trying to like not use that. And I'm really firm with like, you got to get on this because I don't want to chase you down every single month. Thank you, Jeff. <laughs> Thanks, Clement. Any other questions? Um, <laughs> sorry. Uh, do you have any clients with uh, converting from the previous version of 4.9 or something else to 5.0 to the new, new one? <laughs> uh, I think we've already converted all of them. Yeah, I haven't had any issues yet. Are you having issues with the update, with the latest one? some yeah yeah oh that's what backups are for <laughs> if it does we'll back it up we'll go back to it later when we got time on it you know uh just want to wrap it up with this uh you know like i mentioned in the beginning like uh i did not do this when i first started building uh when i first started freelancing or when i started building our agency I really wish I did. If there's anything I could change uh, from the way that I started uh, my journey as a web designer and developer was I wish I would have done this from the very beginning because by having, by having this built up, you have a solid MRR, you have that solid monthly uh, revenue come in. And, you know, I don't know about everyone else, but I've had to take on jobs I did not want to take just because I needed to get paid. I had to do jobs that with clients that were way like low balling me and like trying to get paid way less, but I still had to like give in and go for those jobs. And it sucks. It doesn't feel good, you know, working and being undervalued. It doesn't feel good taking a job with a client that, you know, doesn't want to pay the full price by building up that MRR. If you get like 10, 15 clients on this, you could go months without getting a new project. You could pick and choose the jobs that you want. You could look for that target client that you want, that value one, that, that client that's looking for value. And that is going to value the work you're going to do. And of course, pay for the work that, that, you know, that you're doing. I mean, there's no reason why you cannot build a website on Elementor and charge minimum $10,000 if you find the clients that are actually doing good business, that website is going to bring them in so much more money and it's going to help their business out. And by having that in place and not having to worry every single month, uh, last year, just share something personal with our business. Uh, last year, uh, we did a complete rebrand. Uh, we did, uh, uh, we changed our name. We rebranded. We did, I did a lot more stepping back and looking at uh, my direction of running a company. I stepped back and, you know, I was, I've been so much working in the business as a developer, as a designer, as a project manager, as the guy doing every single thing to step back and to work on my business instead of in it. And uh, taking that time away and like, business got slow. We didn't get any new leads for about, I think it was about a good three months. We got no new leads, but because we had this going right here, uh, we were okay. Like we made it through every single month. We made what we needed. We hit our run rate for our business to keep going. And uh, that's why this is so important right here. Cause it could give you that chance, that opportunity to step back, look at how you're running your business and really work on the business side of it instead of trying to do client work, client work, client work, client work, you know? Uh, I, I can't stress how valuable this is right here. I got, I got a buddy that told me about this uh, like a couple years ago, he told me about this. And like now we talk and he's got like, I don't know, like 30, 40 
clients on his maintenance plan and he's just kicking back you know he's literally kicking back and like taking the jobs that he wants to do and just stress-free and that that's the goal of this one more question sure uh can you share share us about the proportion of the monthly and annual payment from from your client oh okay so we do give the option for annual where it's like i think they pay 10 months for the year to get it done annually we've never had anyone sign up annually though but i've never really pushed it either but we do get that option like I'll send a, <clears throat> I'll send a link. Uh, let me see. I can send it in the Facebook group. You guys could check it out. What we do in our plan. Like we have our plan detailed out there. Um, yeah, it's up to you though if you want to do that or not. I personally like the monthly. You know, it's, it's good. I, I like. Just sitting at home and I just get little dings on PayPal on my phone. It's a good feeling. <laughs> All right. Any other questions before we wrap this up? All right, cool. So let's go ahead and, and wrap it up first. I just want to thank everyone uh, for being here, participating and, uh, I hope this helps. If you have any questions about it while you're building your plans, uh, you know, throw them inside the Facebook group. I mean, you could always DM me, I'm always available, but by throwing it inside the Facebook group in the BBE group, it can help the rest of the group because there's a lot of people just starting their businesses. And especially during these times, uh, for anyone uh, that might've had like a regular career and did like web design and look at that as being a secondary career, like this is the time right now where we might be wanting to change that over and making the web design as a full-time career. And by, you know, the rest of the group and everyone like, just like if you have questions or if you have something that's working for you as well, uh, by posting in the group, it's really going to help everyone else learn. And that's the whole point of the BBE group. It's for uh, web designers and elemental enthusiasts to learn and grow their businesses together. Cool. With that, I guess we could go ahead and end the call. I'm so bad with goodbyes. I think I say that on every call. I just don't know how to do goodbyes well. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, you so much, Jeff. Thank you. Thanks, Jeff. Thank Cheers. you, Jeff, for the call. Bye. Thanks, Thank bye. You, everyone. Stay safe, everyone.